So next we have uh, Dr. Niket Gandhi. Uh, he will be presenting on endothelitis aspects of HSV. Dr. Niket Gandhi did his uh, cornea fellowship from LV Prasad Eye Institute, Hyderabad, and is currently practicing in Navi Mumbai Lakshmi Eye Institute. Over to you, Niket. So very good morning to all of you, and I would like to thank uh, AIOC at the outset for uh, this opportunity. So just taking you through uh, the third aspect of HSV, that is HSV endothelitis in this uh, IC. So it is uh, an inflammation of the corneal endothelium which may disrupt the endothelial function and cause subsequent visual changes. And primarily, we see corneal stromal edema without any dense stromal infiltrations. So the three most important aspects of this particular entity are the stromal edema, the corneal edema, the KPs which we see behind the corneal edema and the subsequent aritis, uh, the simultaneous aritis which happens in these cases. So the etiology can be, if you just see this particular clinical picture can be multifactorial. The other uh, common viral infections are the uh, VZV and CMB. It can be related to, to uh, other medications. It can be a uh, fungal masquerading uh, this particular entity, other zoological and environmental causes. And it may occur simultaneously with interstitial keratitis, aritis, and trabeculitis. So when we say that uh, endothelitis is uh, uh, immune uh, inflammation or an immune endothelitis, it is when the cellular uh, immune attacks on the endothelial uh, cells are happening and there is a, a marked with HSV antigens. There are primed immune cells come in contact with the target receptors and endothelial cell membrane and there is no direct vascular contribution uh, as such for immune endothelitis. So, uh, as compared to stromal keratitis, the target of inflammation is just the endothelium and the KPs are under the areas of edema only in most of these cases. Uh, there is an absence of stromal infiltration as well as uh, neovascularization in the uh, in uh, HSV endothelitis and there is a chronic course may lead to intractable corneal edema or a very faint scarring which results in uh, loss of visual acuity. Now uh, the confocal microscopic studies have shown that uh, viral endothelitis uh, may have these few features like pseudo guttate and large intercellular gaps, infiltration of the inflammatory cells and loss of defined cell boundaries of the endothelium and endothelial denudation as well. So as you can see, the endothelium is uh, uh, the target of these, uh, this particular entity and uh, it ha does have significant effect on the overall endothelial function. Now, the three different aspects are the, are the disciform uh, type, which is the most common one, uh, the diffuse endothelitis and a linear endothelitis as well. So, uh, in disciform endothelitis, we see photophobia, limbal injection, iritis, and visual, uh, ad, uh, reduced visual acuity because of its location. And there is also uh, central paracentral corneal uh, edema, ground glass appearance, and KPs and elevated IOP due to iritis and trabeculitis. So the treatment is uh, quite straightforward where uh, it is quite sensitive to topical steroids. There is complete resolution of edemas and KPs without stromal scarring or loss of visual uh, or loss of vision. In a few cases, it may be self-limiting, but in severe cases where uh, the treatment has been delayed for quite some time may lead to a persistent edema scarring and neovascularization. Now, linear endothelitis is a very rare entity. Again, it presents with pain, photophobia, and injection. Clinically, it is seen as a line of keratic precipitates on the corneal endothelium that progress centrally from the limbus and uh, peripheral stromal edema and epithelial edema between the KPs and the limbus. So, in a paper described uh, a case of HSV endothelitis in the post-PKP uh, patients, and as you can see, it clearly describes the area of uh, involvement versus uh, in the graft versus uh, a normal cornea. Now, an entity which is known as diffuse endothelial, uh, endothelial keratitis presents with retroconial plaques, scattered KPs, and a diffuse stromal edema and severe aritis. It is a great uh, masquerading and a differential diagnosis in this case is always fungal keratitis. A paper uh, by Todokara et al. showed how 
a entity which uh, mimics fungal keratitis was treated for fungal keratitis and was not responding for the same and subsequently when they tested it in real time pcr for hsv they uh, found hsv and were subsequently treated on those lines and they found uh, that it was quite the results were quite good so the as far as the three forms are concerned the disciform endothelitis can be treated with corticosteroids or topical corticosteroids alone the diffuse uh, will uh, require oral acyclovir along with the topical steroids however the linear endothelitis most commonly seen in uh, post uh, keratoplasty patients will require oral and uh, acyclovir and oral corticosteroids along with topical corticosteroids take home message is that early diagnosed endothelial keratitis can be treated with topical steroids with excellent outcomes differential diagnosis for endothelitis needs to be considered in cases of retrocorneal plaques and the role of rtpcr of aqueous humor for suspicious cases can also be considered thank you thank you nikki so the difference between endothelitis and stromal keratitis one big difference is that immune stromal keratitis is an immune entity there's no active infection that is happening whereas in endothelitis there is an active infection happening second thing because there is an active infection happening at the endothelial level at a deeper level topical acyclovir does not work for endothelitis so any patient in you in which you have disproportionate edema with kps and there's no stromal infiltration that you are seeing or there's only mild stromal infiltration that you are seeing then you are dealing with endothelitis so in that you have to remember that don't start on steroids plus topical acyclovir in these patients oral acyclovir is a must as compared to topical acyclovir so oral acyclovir give a better outcome to these patients preserving the endothelium as well will have a better penetration as well and uh, better faster resolution as well so no topical acyclovir for endothelitis patients as compared to where we discussed about immune stromal keratitis where topical was a choice in the initial 2 3 weeks to prevent epithelial keratitis so in endothelitis as an active infection go for oral acyclovir only along with your steroids